EPS, Emergency Psychiatric Service. Normal, pilot episode. Teleplay written by Holly Scarabosio, Christopher Carson Emans, and Michael Michelli. Created by Holly Scarabosio. Normal, pilot episode. Teaser, fade in. Interior, quaint home, bedroom, day. Samantha, a little girl, eight, sits on her bed. Samantha's wearing a nice dress and looks pretty. She appears apprehensive. She looks out the window at some twisted branches of an oak tree. A blue bird lands on the tree branch. SFF, the special effects, soft, tense, instrumental music. At some point, she was normal, like everybody else. Samantha studies the branches, the bird, its wings. Then, she focuses on a pad on her lap and begins shading in a sketch of the view. It's good, she has talent. FX, music stops. God only knows when it started, because she can't tell me. Her bedroom door opens. Samantha's dad, 35, clean cut, enters, sits on the bed next to her. It's time, Samantha. No, no more. Get up. Samantha moves to the far end of the bed, away from her father, pushing at him. If I drag you, it'll just hurt. Samantha gets up and reluctantly walks with her father down the hallway to the basement door. She looks back towards her bedroom. They reach the door. No, Daddy, no! She fades out, whimpering. Samantha's mom, well-dressed, comes up behind her and injects her with something. You won't remember a thing. Samantha starts to go limp. She can hear other voices as her parents lead her downstairs to the basement. At the bottom of the stairs, Samantha can see fuzzy outlines of a pink frilly bed with straps on it. Shadow figures of people standing away from the bed. Then everything goes black. Cut to interior, quaint home, bedroom, day. Back in her bedroom, we see her pad on the floor still open to her drawing, but out the window, the bluebird is gone. Rain begins to pour. At some point, she was normal. Cut to black, end of teaser. Cut to main titles. <coughs> Act one. Cut to interior car night. We are in San Francisco. Raindrops are flooding the car's windshield like a car wash. The windshield wipers are on full blast, but ineffective. The car is idling. A woman, Helena, 29, energetic, insightful, kind, medium height, curvaceous, medium length, thick brown hair, brown eyes, looks at the driver, Jake, 31, a cute guy in pajamas. Thanks for taking me. I hate driving in the rain. We recognize her voice. It's the woman from the voiceover earlier. Jake smiles. If you can't handle it, just call me. I'll wait up for a bit. Go home. Go back to sleep. I'll be fine. You sure? You never seem this nervous at the VA. First days are always nerve-wracking. It's the unknown. I know once I get in, I'll feel better. I'm just feeling a little off balance. Don't worry, it's... I know. It's nothing you can't handle. Helena smiles. She kisses him. You know me better than I do. I know I love you. As she goes to get out of the car, the rain is coming down hard. She struggles to open her umbrella. Jake yells out to her through the car door window. First day is always hard. Just remember to breathe. You'll figure it out. You always do. Helena turns and faces the door. It's nothing I can't handle. Cut to interior, EPS, Emergency Psychiatric Services. Day, early morning, 7 a.m. Pearl, 44, petite, well put together, sharp and warm, is standing just inside the EPS lobby door. Pearl notices the car as Jake drives off. Helena struggles to open the lobby door, struggles against the wind and rain. She enters the lobby. Helena? You must be Pearl. Yes. Welcome to Emergency Psychiatric Services. I am Pearl, your head nurse. Helena closes her umbrella. It's so very nice to finally meet you. I know you've been through the EPS training, but we need to go over a few things before we enter the unit. Okay. I'm a quick study. Bye, Helena. Pearl pulls out a new lanyard and presents it to Helena with a clasp towards her. Make sure there's a safety attachment on your lanyard. If someone tries to grab it from around your neck, the safety will release. So I won't be choked to death? Very good. Helena takes the lanyard and clips her ID to it. The ID reads, Helena Hollis, Psychiatric Nurse 2, Emergency Psychiatric Services. Helena checks the attachment, making sure the lanyard separates when she pulls it. Helena puts it on, it separates, then she reattaches the lanyard. Pearl extends a sheet of kids' stickers. Helena looks at the stickers, then notices a rainbow sticker on Pearl's badge. Put one of these over your last name to cover it. You don't want anyone in here to know it. They can find it where you live. And I promise, you don't want them to know. Helena nods like she's been in this situation before. I'm serious. 
don't let them know anything about you. You understand? This is already quite different than the BA. Pearl grabs Helena's ID and pulls it, popping the lanyard and snatching it from Helena, shocking her. Here's another thing that's different. Your key can't be around your neck. Pearl separates a key that was clipped to the ID. A patient can rip it off you like I just did and open any of the security doors. You remember that from your training? Of course, sure. Pearl hands the lanyard back to Helena. Helena nods and takes the key off her lanyard. Pearl is moving fast and efficiently. She hands Helena a pink stretchy bracelet. Keep it on this. Helena puts her lanyard back on and she puts the unit key on the stretchy pink bracelet. Is this all making sense? Yes. Good. Let's go. Cut to interior, EPS, tiny vestibule, outer door, day. Pearl leads Helena through a locked door in a narrow hallway into, cut to, interior, EPS, tiny vestibule, inner door, day. They are in a tiny vestibule, one locked door behind them, one in front of them. The yellow lighting is dreadful, the floor is dirty. SFX, screaming can be heard in the direction they're headed. Your key works for both doors. Helena reaches her key out to open the door in front of her, but Pearl grabs her hand, stopping her abruptly. SFX screaming ends. Look first. Always look first. Helena, frazzled, slowly moves to the door's window to look. Suddenly, a crazed female patient's face slams onto the glass window. This is Samantha, who is now a woman in her twenties. Helena screams and jumps back, bumping into Pearl. Sorry. It started me too. Helena stabilizes herself and steps forward towards the window. Samantha, her face dirty, tears stained, with thick, short, matted hair and mucus coming from her nose, makes direct eye contact with Helena through the glass, then screams at her, bloodshot eyes wide. She pushes violently up against the window and spits towards Helena. I know what this is. You've seen this before? No, but I know just what this is. Let me out of here! Samantha pounds her fists on the door. Pearl watches Helena's reaction carefully. SFX, a bell alarm sounds. Two male staff members quickly come up from behind Samantha and move her away from the door. Come on, Sam. I have a cheeseburger for you. Let's not make this difficult. I don't want... No! No! Samantha is thrashing around, screaming. No, I said! No, Daddy, no! Yeah, that's what this is about. Helena watches the staff members take Samantha to the floor, kicking and screaming. She looks through the window again carefully, seeing that the coast is clear. But in the distance, staff have surrounded Samantha, who is now pinned to the floor. Looks safe now. Okay. Helena opens the door and they enter. Cut to interior EPS day room, day. As Helena and Pearl enter the day room, they see that more staff members have arrived to help restrain Samantha, some of them holding leather restraints. Two staff members hold Samantha's arms above and below the elbow, pinning them to the floor. Samantha continues struggling and screaming. Two more staff members hold her legs down above and below the knee. Eventually, Samantha is lifted off the floor and carried away to the seclusion room. That's called a show of force, like you were taught in training. It's very different with a violent patient. We dropped patients. That's why we have ongoing training. Why exactly is she here? Samantha? She's a 5150, danger to herself and others. But basically, she just can't deal with it. Helena turns to find the source of the voice, which belongs to Gaetan, 32, a tall, muscular surfer type with light blue eyes, comes up behind Pearl and Helena. Helena is caught off guard by his handsome appearance for a moment. She is speechless. Gaetan breaks the ice by extending his hand for a shake. Gaetan. Helena grabs his hand. Cut to interior, a fantasy location, day. Helena and Gaetan are pressed up against a wall, kissing. Cut to interior, EPS day room, day. Helena. Pearl watches their interaction with interest. Welcome to the EPS. Listen to Pearl. She knows everything. Will do. He smiles at her, looks over at Pearl, and nods before heading off. Helena watches him leave. That's Gaetan Oster, our medical director. I never would have guessed that. Seems kind of young to be a med medical director. Young yeah. and handsome. But there is something else about him. Pearl looks at Helena inquiringly. Just something. I don't know. Doesn't matter. Helena shrugs it away. I saw someone drop you off this morning. Family? Hmm? Helena snaps out of it. Looked like a man had dropped you off. Your husband? Helena fumbles with her response. My uh, fiancé, Jake. 
he came with me here to California. You know, we're together. Helena Schroes again. Well, wow. congratulations. Let's head over to the seclusion room. Pearl leads Helena over to the seclusion room, which Samantha is now inside of. Beside the seclusion room entrance is Jackie, 50s, a bit sour in appearance, clipboard in hand, a magazine on top of all her important papers. Anything been ordered? Does it matter? Won't help her anyway. That's not your call. Pearl looks over her shoulder and notices Dr. Yen nearby. Can I get two of out of an I am as a verbal? Dr. Yen waves and yells back at Pearl. You got it. Pearl turns back towards Jackie, looking sternly into her eyes. Jackie, give me the magazine and go get the two milligrams of Ativan I am. Jackie gives the magazine and the restraint clipboard to Helena while looking at Pearl. Helena and Pearl watch Jackie walk over to the medication room door, unlock it, and enter. Staff come and go here all the time, and then there's Jackie. She has been here a long time. Too long. Pearl gently takes the clipboard from Helena's hand and looks at the documentation. Then Pearl unlocks the seclusion room door while leading Helena through the entrance into the seclusion room. Cut to interior EPS seclusion room day. Pearl approaches Samantha, who is restrained. Helena looks on nervously. Are you feeling calm enough for me to let you out of the restraints? Samantha looks at Helena. Who's this? My name is Helena. Samantha licks her lips at Helena. Keep it together, Sam, if you want out of here. You can't be threatening anyone or yourself. The hell with you. I'm ready, now, unless you girls want to play. <laughs> Samantha, it is up to you when you get out of here. You don't know anything. We'll come back later. You'll come, that's for sure. Samantha chuckles again, cold and sickening. Helena follows Pearl out of the room, feeling Samantha's eyes on her back. <coughs> Interior, BPS, outside of seclusion room, day. Helena takes a deep breath as she exits the seclusion room, resting one shoulder against the wall. She has an uneasy feeling that something is about to happen. Pearl approaches with Dr. Yen, then starts looking over medical orders with him. Helena looks back through the door's window at Samantha, who now struggles against the restraints, her laughing having now turned to crying. Jackie walks by Helena without making eye contact and looking a little nervous. Got the two of Ativan. Helena notices Jackie has the syringe of Ativan hanging low, dangling in her hand. Okay, I'll go with you. Helena unlocks the seclusion room door and opens it to Jackie's surprise. Jackie puts her hand on Helena's hand, trying gently to stop her from coming along. Cut to interior, a fantasy location day. A blurry scene of an EPS staff member hitting a patient. Cut to interior, EPS, outside of seclusion room day. No, honey, that's okay. Sam and I go way back. Helena shudders feeling something is wrong with Jackie's touch. She looks at Pearl, who is still engaged in conversation with Dr. Yen, then back at Jackie. Really, I just need the practice. Don't want to be seen as a newbie for too long if I can help it. Jackie tries to hide her displeasure with this. All right, it'll be quick though. They enter the room together. Pearl looks over her shoulder at the sight of them entering the seclusion room together. Cut to interior EPS seclusion room day. Samantha grimaces at Helena and Jackie as they approach. Thought I told you to leave me the hell alone. We're here to give you a shot of Ativan. It'll help you calm down. And if you're calm, that's a step closer to getting out of here. Jackie approaches her with the shot. There's no way that bitch is touching me. You don't have any say. Helena is alarmed by their exchange. Step aside, Jackie. You're not my boss. Pearl enters the room. Jackie, Helena has the authority to ask you to step aside. So please do as she asks. Jackie steps back. Please hand me the syringe. You can't give it. You didn't draw it up. I didn't say I was going to give it. Just hand it to me. Samantha watches Jackie and Helena's tension over the syringe. Samantha struggles against the restraints hard, like she can get away. Jackie looks at Pearl, then hands the syringe to Helena. Helena takes the syringe, then kneels down by Samantha's bedside. Samantha, you want out of here, right? Samantha looks at Helena silently, then up at the ceiling, as Samantha hears adult voices in her head. SFX indistinct chattering. Helena reaches out and touches Samantha's hand. Cut to interior, a fantasy location, day. Helena also hears the indistinct chattering and sees blurred people standing around a bed. Cut to interior, EPS, the seclusion room, day. Samantha, can you hear me? Did you hear what I said? 
Samantha refocuses on Helena's face. Her eyes are tired. She is calmer. They call me Sam. Then Sam it is. Doesn't matter. Samantha looks away toward the wall. I can help you. You know the deal. You have to contract for safety. Demonstrate that you're not going to try to hurt yourself or anyone else. Do that, then you're free. Can you do that? Samantha looks away from Helena to Pearl, who nods at her. Samantha looks back at Helena. Yeah, I'm not going to do anything. Helena looks to Pearl. I'll take responsibility for her. We can take her out and she can be on one-on-one -on -one for an hour or so. She'll be all right. Your call. Helena nods to confirm her responsibility. Pearl leaves the room to go get more staff. Jackie starts to head out too, but Helena stops her. I need to talk to you for a minute. Jackie leers at her. Cut to interior EPS medication room, day. Helena stands in the tiny medication room with Jackie. Pearl asked you for two milligrams of Ativan, and you drew up four milligrams. This is a definite medication error. You could have put Samantha in a coma, or even killed her, considering we don't know what she's already taken today. I'd advise you to mind your own business. You don't know me or anyone around here. I'm the union steward. Helena steps closer to Jackie. Here's what I know. You draw up the wrong dose on any patient ever again, and I will see to it that you're fired. If you ever lay a hand on Samantha or any patient, you'll find yourself in the county jail, hanging out with all the EPS patients you've abused. Abused? You have no idea what you're talking about. There's not much I haven't seen in my short life. So, if you have nothing to hide, then why are you so defensive? Why didn't you show Pearl the syringe? An incident like this, like what could have happened, is bad for EPS, and it wouldn't help Samantha. Good healthcare workers live by a code. They protect their own, but not the bad ones. We deal with those. SFX, suddenly there's a knock on the door. Helena and Jackie turn their heads, noticing Gaetan entering. Hey, everything okay in here? Yeah, everything's fine. I was just leaving. Jackie walks out, and Gaetan walks towards Helena. You all right? <laughs> yeah, just getting to know Jackie. Gaetan picks up the syringe on the counter before Helena can stop him. I thought Yen said two milligrams. There are four milligrams in here. Who drew this up? Helena looks down at the floor. Was it Jackie? Helena struggles with how to respond. You're not here to protect anyone. I need to know. I dealt with the problem and it won't happen again. Can you co-sign for me to waste this four milligram of Ativan? Ah, yeah. I saw that you got Sam on her strange about the Ativan. Guess she didn't need it. No, Sam didn't need it. I sense that she has a long history of people giving her things she doesn't need. You sense it? Oh, you know, she seemed calm. She was able to, contr to contract for, safe, for safety. That type of sense. Common sense. He accidentally bumps up against her as he reaches for the error log book. Sorry. Cut to interior a fantasy location day. Helena looks on at Gaetan off in the distance, crying in his car. Cut to interior EPS medication room day. He sets the book on the counter next to her, signs it. Thanks. Helena also signs it. She puts the book back. <laughs> they, they should have made this room bigger. Same problem at the VA I worked at. Microscopic medication room. They share a laugh. Well, we'd better get back out there. Yep, thanks for your help. They walk towards the exit and get stuck against each other in the doorway, both trying to leave at once, again bumping into each other. Here, you go first. She backs away. Katan heads through the door, stops, turns back, and says, It's nice to see somebody looking out for Sam. Helena smiles. Katan does too. He exits. Helena stands in the medication room doorway, then moves back inside. She lets out her breath as if she was holding in all of her emotions. She's holding back her tears. She opens a freezer and pulls out an ice pack. She touches it to her face, cooling herself off. How did I get here? <laughs> can I really handle it? Cut to interior hallway, day. Helena emerges, watching the nurses moving about, tending to their work. Most look at her and nod as if she's already one of them. Helena keeps patting herself with the ice pack. She makes her way down the hall to the door of the seclusion room. She looks through the window, and the bed is empty. Sheets have been changed, and restraints are nowhere to be found. Helena looks across the day room and sees Samantha sitting calmly in an oversized chair with a staff member at arm's length. She has a sketch pad, and she is drawing. 
The large windows to the courtyard outside show the heavy rain coming down. Helena tosses the ice pack, walks over to Samantha and the staff person. How are you doing, Samantha? Sam? Want something to eat? You know we only have cheeseburgers. It's the county way. Samantha doesn't look up. Keeps drawing. Not hungry. Is that a blooper? Helena, looking down at Samantha's drawing pad. Yeah, my crappy bluebird of happiness. He goes where I go. Fade to dark. End of Act 1. Act 2. Cut to interior of Helena's apartment. Day. The apartment is still completely full of boxes. Helena sits at the table in the cramped kitchen across from Jake. The two of them are eating Chinese food from cartons. The patients at the VA were similar in a lot of ways to each other. Most were Vietnam vets with PTSD or schizophrenia. There were some psychopaths, but EPS is different. I used to have a routine with my patients. I could kind of predict how they would react in certain situations. But here, anybody could come through that door. Anything could happen. Are you worried? In an odd way, I feel comfortable there, behind the locked doors. <laughs> the staff seemed really well trained, and Pearl has it together. There was a show of force today, you know, a resta restraint, and, well, no one got hurt, but I know it happens. Oh, that's reassuring. No one got hurt today. What about the staff? I mean, any guys I should be worried about? <laughs> Helena rolls her eyes and laughs. Oh, please. You know my baggage. And nobody else wants to deal with all this. <laughs> she looks into her Chinese food box, digging around with her chopsticks for a bit. He watches her closely. Eventually, he turns his gaze down to his own food. Helena glances at him to see if he's still reading her. He's not. We need to eat better than this. I'm sure we will, once we put the place together and we find the kitchen. He laughs. Helena turns her attention to the boxes around the apartment. Any luck with the job, then? I sent out a bunch of resumes. Fingers crossed. We should get all this unpacked and the place set up before you find something. Otherwise, we'll be living out of boxes permanently. Jake salutes. Aye, aye, Captain. I'll spend all day tomorrow deboxing while you're playing Nurse Ratchet, <laughs> passing out paper cups of pills. You really think that's what I do, don't you? Yeah. What, what else is there to it? Helena walks away towards the window, then turns back toward Jake. Seriously? She shakes her head, exasperated. Cut to interior EPS registration room, morning. Helena enters the registration room with Pearl. So, in registration, patients either come in by police or family, or they bring themselves in for evaluation, which Sam has done several times. We also accept transfers from jail. Like actual jail? Yes. If they've got an inmate that's too out of control, we handle it. That's what the cuff key is for. Wait, if the prison can't handle them, they send them here to us? Pearl smiles. Well, welcome aboard. Doran, an overweight woman in her late 50s, short, dyed red hair, and vintage Alice Cooper t-shirt, sits at the intake window. She looks up at Helena as she and Pearl enter through the registration door and into the registration area. Hey, Toto, where'd you come from? My name's... Doran turns away from Helena to speak to the man in the lobby through the registration bulletproof window. Can I help you with something? Doran turns back, now facing Helena and Pearl. That's just Doran. Let me introduce you to Robert, Roberta, and Colette. Robert, 40s, square-shaped haircut, medium build, stands near his wife, Roberta, 40s, a short Italian one. Hi, I'm Helena. I'm Robert. This is my wife, Roberta. He shakes Helena's hand gently. Roberta follows suit. I know, this is normally frowned upon, but HR okayed it in our, in our case. We usually work different shifts. Let me know if I can ever help you find anything. Helena smiles, then notices Dr. Roger Leland. A man with short and stylish salt and pepper hair, 40s, leaning against the wall near Doran, peering into his notes on his clipboard. Leland looks up at Helena briefly with an icy stare, then looks back down at his notes. Pearl notices their eye contact. That's Dr. Leland. I'm sure you'll need him. He looks a bit busy at the moment. Colette, 20s, a large young woman sporting a Mickey Mouse shirt and, tea and jeans, approaches Helena, breaking her from the strange feeling she got from Dr. Leland. Me and you, lunch, noon, on the patio. I'll tell you how it really is. She smiles. Okay, thanks. See you then. Remember to dodge and weave. Dodge and weave. <laughs> Colette winks, and just like that, she's off. Helena smiles at her, and Pearl continues showing her around. The paperwork starts in registration. 
here's the 72 hour hold, contact sheet, history, and physical forms. Make sure the hold is signed. If it's not, it's not legal. Pearl looks at Dora. Back door. Got it. Pearl hands a clipboard to Helena. Here's your clipboard. Let's bring one in. Doran gets on her intercom. Back door. SFX, a bell-like buzzer sound. All police are supposed to lock up their guns in their car or in the outside gun locker before entering <coughs> EPS. They ask why. It's because we say so. A police officer enters, escorting an elderly woman, Jean, who's pushing a shopping cart. Pearl notices the officer is still carrying his weapon. Officer, please secure your weapon. I'm not giving you my gun. Helena takes a worn paper from her clipboard and reads it to the officer. Policy 168, no such person, police officer or otherwise, shall carry a firearm into a locked psychiatric unit. Law enforcement personnel shall either place said weapon or weapons in their locked truck or car, or shall be provided a firearm box to secure said weapon or weapons. She looks knowingly with intent at the officer. Pearl smiles in appreciation of Helena's attitude. The police officer exhales with irritation, then backtracks, putting the weapon in the locked firearm box, then takes the key. He re-enters with the woman and her overstuffed shopping cart. You knew? About four months. I don't have a lot of time to waste here. I need to get going. You put her on a 5150 for gravely disabled. Yeah. Pearl approaches the elderly woman. What's your name? Jean. Jean, do you know where you are? County Psych Ward. Yes, and what day is it? Friday. But don't ask me who's the president, because it don't really matter. And he's crazier than me. Where do you sleep at night? Pearl nods, appreciating Helena's initiative. Under the freeway overpass, near First Street. I got my tent and camping stove there. Marty, he watches my stuff when I go out. Where do you get food? Behind the fancy grocery store on the 2nd and Bascom. They dump the day old stuff out every morning early. Jimmy gives me a cup of coffee when I'm out back by the dumpster. Jean, we're going to go through this door in front of us, into the unit, and into the intake room. Okay? Like I have a choice. At least it's dry in here. Helena looks through the locked door window into the day room, indicates it is safe to enter. Pearl, Jean, Helena, and police officer all walk through the door, shopping cart in tow. They all enter into the interview room with the cart. The door to the interview room is left open. Pearl looks at the shopping cart, then back at Jean. What's in the cart? My whole life's in there. Everything I got except my cat. She died last month, couldn't keep all of her. Jean looks over at the shopping cart, at the remains of her orange cat, just the tail. Any weapons, knives, or guns in there? I got a knife, yeah, but I need that. See, you know, things happen out there. And I, I cut food with it, too. Jean points to where her knife is in the cart. Helena reaches over to the intake table, takes some plastic medical gloves and puts them on. She removes the dirty and sticky knife from the shopping cart, and a mouse jumps out of Jean's belongings past Helena onto the floor, scurrying around the police officer. Everyone, including the officer, recoil. The mouse heads out the door into the day room. Two staff members chase after the mouse, following it into a side interview room, closing the door behind them. Jean remains calm, unfazed by the event. Got anything to eat here? Is there anything else we should know about what you have inside the cart, Jean? Jean walks up to Pearl, suddenly seeming paranoid. She leans into her ear, eyes darting around. I have savings. Pearl nods in an understanding manner, then looks at the officer. Jean isn't gravely disabled. Not to mention, she's got a place to live, somewhere to get food, and has her belongings. The officer is irritated. I wrote the 5150. You have to uphold it. Wait here. Pearl walks out of the room and quickly returns with Dr. Yen. Yen approaches Jean. I'm Dr. Yen, one of the psychiatrists here. It says on your 5150 that you were talking to yourself. Is that true? Doc yeah. Dr. Yen is holding the clipboard with the 5150. No, I was talking to my friend Marty. See, he was taking a whiz behind the bushes near the overpass when this guy decides to drag me and my cart away. Jean points to the officer. There's no one in the bushes. Dr. Yen places the 5150 on his knee and uses a red pen to draw a line through it and writes D slash seed on it. You can't do that. 
Apparently he just did. Pro motions for the officer to leave, and another staff member lets him out. You're a quick study. Helena smiles. Jean, would you like a burger and some juice? You can stay here voluntarily for a few hours to get a shower and have your clothes washed. We'll put you, we'll put your cart in the back room, locked up. Don't go touching the stuff in the cart. I don't need a shower or clean clothes. But I'll rest for a bit and take that burger and juice. Cut to interior Helena's apartment bedroom, day. Boxes are partially unpacked. Jake has stacks of his folded clothes everywhere. Jake is sitting at a table, Skyping on his laptop, with a well-dressed man sitting in an office conference room. Do you need to talk this over with anyone? No. Um, all set on this end. So, thank you very much for the opportunity. I'm looking forward to getting started and joining your team. We're lucky to get you, Jake. See you Monday. See you then. Jake smiles, signs off, and closes his laptop. He stands and looks over the boxes, takes a deep breath. Then he lifts some of his folded clothes, putting them back in a box. Cut to interior EPS processing room, day. Helena, Pearl, Jean, and a medical assistant known as Mountain, Mo for short, a large man from Hawaii, all stand in the intake room near the cart. Helena starts unpacking the cart. Pearl holds a clipboard. We have to log all of this? Yes, we log everything. Stop! Don't touch anything! We've got to log all of your belongings. You'll be getting everything back. Helena takes out several blankets, a large blue tarp, and two dolls. Careful. Those are my kids. I'll be extra careful then. Helena respectfully sets down Jean's kids, then continues unloading the cart, finding a hairbrush, comb, several cans of cat food, Jean's deceased cat's tail, a plastic teacup, two pairs of well-worn shoes, several pairs of dirty clothes, and a newspaper. Helena notices newspaper inside Jean's shoes as well. As she starts to handle the newspaper, Jean loses her calm. Put that back! Other staff are alerted when she yells. I'll be very careful. Pearl waves off the other staff and they stay away. Helena sets down the newspaper, which has something wrapped inside of it. Helena starts to unroll the newspaper nervously when suddenly Jean grabs Helena's arm tensely. Stop, Jean. Helena tries to pull her, pull her arm away. It's burning. They struggle. Mountain silently walks over and firmly but gently touches Jean's shoulder. Get out of my stuff! Calm down, Jean. We're not going to take anything. We're just making sure that everything you have is accounted for. It's all yours. Mountain calmly removes Jean's hand off of Helena. The newspaper tears open and $20 bills pop out like exploding confetti, thousands of dollars worth. Helena and the others stare in shock at the money fluttering to the ground. Jean drops to her knees and scampers to clean it all up. It's mine. I didn't steal it. That's my life savings. My checks! Helena glances into the cart at a dozen more bundles wrapped in newspaper. She lifts one with her fingers, peeking in. Sure enough, more money. What do you mean, checks? You know, social security checks. No bags. No bags. They can burn down. Got my cart and kids to take care of. They can burn. They can burn down. They can burn! Helena and Pearl look at each other, both shocked at this woman's wealth. Okay, Jean, no banks. We'll count it and lock it up. We'll all three sign and you'll get it all back. Jean looks at Helena for confirmation. That's exactly what we'll do. I know you've lost some things in your life. You can believe us. You won't lose anything today. End of Act Two. Act 3. Cut to interior cafe. Day. Helena sits across the table from Colette, the pair enjoying their lunches. How much money? Like over 20 grand. No way, Jose. Not a ding-dang day goes by without something over the top happening. Jean has all this money and she's walking around homeless. That's why they call it crazy, Helena. We don't have to make sense of it. We just have to deal with it. Well, I... When she grabbed me, I felt something hot. Hot? Yeah. The way she was so protective of her stuff. All she has is in her cart, where she can keep it safe. Especially her kids. Two dolls. Just the way she kept saying, burn down, over and over. About banks. She was afraid of her money being... I guess it was that. I thought it was that when she grabbed me. But... 
I got the sense it was more than that. The way she said the word burn, and you put that together with her dolls, I think what? I think her kids, her dolls, are her replacements. I think she had actual children, you know, burned in a fire. And then my wrist. Helena turns her right wrist over, exposing three red fingerprints on her skin. Oh, where did they come from? Does it hurt? It stings and burns a little. I don't know what happened. Maybe her grip was just tight? Did you show anyone else? No, it's nothing. I think you should tell Pearl, and you should know what happened to Jean. What? You're on the money. They haven't given you access to all the charts yet? No. Get access. Read her chart. Her kids, like you said. Her actual children. Burned to death in a house fire. Really? Yeah. Her house burned down over 20 years ago. I went through her records. She never recovered. Who could? The fire killed her husband and her two daughters. So... Now she has two kids to protect as best she can. I'm not so sure her cart is a bad idea. Just different. That's the thing about EPS. You get used to the patients, and then this place becomes the norm. You start to struggle with your tame, ordinary, comfortable life, and end up preferring to be at EPS. Now that's crazy. Colette laughs. What's the craziest thing that ever happened since you've been here? She takes a bite of her salami and cheese sandwich. Mm. She looks up and considers. Well, there was this one time a male patient who found some scissors in the intake desk on the unit. He started swinging them around. It got pretty ugly. Two people in the room got cut trying to stop him. Then he was going to turn on himself, but they called a show of force and had to mat him to the wall with a mattress to get the scissors away. It was scary. Much more crazy than a usual crazy day. Colette <laughs>, laughs to herself, then notices Helena's engagement ring. You married? Engaged? Engaged. Helena fiddles with her ring. What's your fiancé think about you working at EPS? I don't know, really. Mostly supportive, I guess. Helena takes a sip of water, looking a bit upset. You guess? Transitions are difficult. Our apartment is a mess. We have a ton of boxes still to unpack. We've got stuff everywhere. He's looking for a job. It's... Let me know if you need any help unpacking. I grew up a Navy brat, so I'm a pro at it. Helena smiles warmly at her. Thanks for lunch. It sucks being new. I'd rather know everything sooner rather than later. What you want is a magic wand to be able to read people's minds. Or do you have one already? <laughs> the last thing I want to do is know what people are thinking. Sometimes I feel like I get a glimpse. And even that is way too scary for me. <laughs> the two laugh. Interior, Helena's apartment, living room, night. Helena and Jake sit in the middle of the sea of boxes. They are unpacking. Helena is pulling framed photos out of a box. All this stuff. I don't even know what's in any of these boxes. We probably should have gotten rid of a lot of this before we moved here. Yeah. There was a woman who came into work today. Had all her possessions in a shopping cart. Made me happy that we at least have a roof over our heads. Jake, not listening to her, takes a deep breath, then looks at her. I got a job offer. That's great. Oh my god, that was fast. <laughs> See, I knew this was going to work out. Yesterday I was thinking Back that... home. A gut punch for Helena. What? The offer was from Somtech. Back home. She struggles to wrap her head around this. In Michigan? Yeah. It's only been a few days. There's going to be something out here. It's good money, too. More than I was making at Behringer. How did you... how did you even... They texted me, then a Skype interview. They liked me, wanted to move fast, put me through to HR, and we worked it out. Worked it out? What does that mean? Jake looks away at another pile of boxes. I took it. I took it, babe. I... You know I love you, but I need to make some money. For us! There is a deafening silence in the room as Helena takes this in. Helena nods, looks at the floor. Without even thinking to talk to me about it? He leans in to touch her. She jumps away and jumps up. Without even talking to me? You took a job? In Michigan? Back home? No, wait. It's not back home. This is home. Here. This apartment. This is our home. 
This is our home right here. How could you not see that? How could you not see that this is our home? Jake stands and faces her. I want this to be our home, but I need to work. Right. Jake sits beside her on the floor. I have to have a job. I can't not have money coming in. I know, but couldn't you have tried a little harder? And? And? I know we don't see eye to eye on politics, but I wouldn't be surprised if there are huge cuts in mental health care. Meaning? The government can't drain its resources into a swamp with no bottom. You may be out of a job. M maybe. You should be thinking of... They can take our resources. They can take everything. But there will still be mentally ill people. You get what you give. Helena walks away. I'm sorry. What are you going to do now? Post on Facebook that we lasted a week in California and failed. Jake looks hard at Helena. His face is pale and he looks tired. No, I won't do anything like that. And we haven't failed. Then what do you call it? A setback. A setback? We were supposed to get married here. All our family would fly out and see how happy we are together. I'd have my job, you'd have yours. You can't quit after a couple days. I'm not a quitter, and I'm not giving up. An opportunity like this is not giving up. It's far from it. And I'm not going to get a better offer than, than this out here, <laughs> especially with no connections. He looks around the room. My money is running out. Time is running out. I'll be making money. I can cover us for a while. I can't live like that. I just don't see any other way. We'll do long distance. We'll make it work. Did you just say you can't live like that? We came out here together. We were going to make it here together. Jake gently places his hands on her shoulders. I thought I was doing this for us. Elena steps away from him. Her back is to him. I thought if we both had jobs, here, together of course, would have been preferable. Preferable? Do you think that makes any sense? We need time. Time? For what? To figure out our lives. Oh, oh, our lives. You want to figure out our lives? So coming here because I found the job I really wanted, because you said you loved me and would be here with me and we would support each other. <laughs> like I said, you get what you give. We'll talk on the phone, Skype. What will we talk about? What do you mean? When we talk about our new jobs, how we wish we were living in the same state, how I wish you could touch me but you can't. Maybe we'll talk about how I, can, how I have to pay for this apartment all by myself. You know, you can always get extra shifts at EPS. You said you could, and I'll help out. Helena's expression goes flat. All she can hear is her heart beating. SFX, Helena's exaggerated heartbeat. Jake's mouth says something else, but she can't hear him. Helena nods her head up and down as if trying to say yes to herself. Finally, SFX, Helena's exaggerated heartbeat ends. This move out here was supposed to be the start of something great, not the end of it. It won't be the end. We just need time. Helena absentmindedly picks up a framed photo from an open box. It is a picture of Helena and Jake during happier times. Cut to exterior, a fantasy location, day. Helena is smiling at Jake. Doesn't it seem like we always do what you want to do? You always say yes. Cut to interior, Helena's apartment, living room, night. How many long distance relationships have you ever heard have a happy ending? I just can't sit here waiting for a job that may never come. I had to do something. It's the something, isn't it? Not the job. What? You have to do something that doesn't involve me. Helena thinks deeply. Jake watches her. She puts the photo down. Yeah. Yeah, you're right. I've got this. No biggie. Extra shifts, flying back and forth, everything is going to be okay. It's actually probably going to be better. Yeah. Yeah. Now that you've explained it, yeah. Everything's going to be just great. Jake is speechless. He absentmindedly closes a box. They want me to start Monday. But I'll be back soon. 
He walks off to the bedroom, leaving Helena alone. She doesn't look at him, keeps her attention on the box full of framed photos of the two of them. It is taking every ounce of her energy not to cry. It starts to rain again. Helena walks to the window. We see Helena's reflection in the window. It's hard to tell if she's crying or if it's just the raindrops. Cut to interior EPS day room morning. Helena sits across from Samantha, who seems more calm than the previous day. Helena is staring off into space. Samantha studies her. Aren't you going to ask me how I'm doing? Helena snaps out of it. Sorry. You seem like you're doing well today. Well enough to let me go? Soon. Just hold it together a little longer. As Helena speaks, it's unclear whether she's talking to Samantha or herself. Just keep holding it together. Sometimes that's about all we can do. Now Samantha looks off into space. When you go home at night and you're making dinner and you have a sharp knife cutting vegetables, do you ever think, even for a split second, of just ramming that knife into your skull? Helena looks at Samantha from head to toe, does not respond. I think it takes most people a lot of effort not to. Helena shifts in her seat. I'm not most people, though. When I was little, my parents used to let people do stuff to me for money. I'm sorry that happened to you. Nothing really could be worse. They told me that's how they got their new Mercedes. <laughs> I actually thought I'd be entitled to that car when I got a license. They'd drug me and tie me down. Sometimes they'd film what the people did to me, sell the tapes. I'm sorry that happened to you, Samantha. Sam. But you have to promise me you'll do whatever it takes to not hurt yourself. I can't make that promise. Just like you can't promise me, I'll be safe out there. Samantha points to the window and outside. Helena is moved by what she's heard. Some days it's harder than others to keep what's real in your head. Not to let your mind wander to another time and place, but realize that you are here, now, safe. Safe for now, but not. Helena puts her hand on Samantha's hand. Cut to interior, a fantasy location, a courtroom, day. Sam is in the witness stand. She's crying. Cut to interior, EPS day room, morning. You'll be safe. Cut to exterior, airport, day. Helena and Jake pull up to the airport. Helena is driving. I guess this is goodbye. There's nothing good about this. It'll be all right. An awkward silence. Then, are you really coming back to visit me? Like you always say. Seriously? Jake laughs and pulls away from Helena, trying to lighten the mood. He gets out, opens the rear door, taking his luggage. What are you going to tell people when they ask? I'm going to tell them you're doing great out here, and I had a chance at a really good offer. Helena takes a deep breath, nods, seeming to digest that okay. Say hi to everybody for me. I will. And call when you land. Okay. He leans in the front seat toward her. They hug. You gonna be okay? He stands outside the car. Me? Oh, sure. I'll be working so many hours I won't even notice you're not here. There's quite a lot for me at work. Not to mention, now I'll have all the covers and the toilet seat is always gonna be down. <laughs> she laughs a fake laugh, then says mostly to herself, Everyone's dream. Jake smiles gently. Bye, Jake. Bye, Helena. They wave weakly. Helena clenches her jaw as hard as possible, fighting her sadness, trying to will it away with toughness. He gives her one more smile, then turns and walks away. She watches him go, her tough expression slowly crumbling away to sadness. Jake turns around and waves one last time as he is about to go through the airport door. Helena quickly hides her devastation, replacing it with an empty smile, only for the fleeting moment when she waves back. As he turns and exits the airport, a sigh of sadness replaces Helena's smile, and then the last of her toughness crumbles. She cries. End of Act 3. Act 4. Exterior EPS Day. It's a nice morning. Helena and Pearl are standing outside having a morning coffee. Helena notices Gaetan in the parking lot. He is talking to a woman. They kiss, obviously boyfriend and girlfriend. Helena absorbs this. Just another gut punch. The woman gets in the car and drives away. Gaetan heads towards them. Morning, ladies. Good morning. Morning. 
Gaetan enters the building. A quiet moment, and then... His girlfriend. Yeah, <coughs> I figured that. Pearl continues with a little more salt in the wound. She's a model. That's nice. Lingerie, swimsuits, huh. paddle novelties. Helena tries her best to act normal. Oh. <laughs> Just kidding. I don't know what she does. I think she's a realtor? <laughs> Helena laughs, seeming to let her guard down a bit. Come on, Hollis. Let's get to work. Cut to interior EPS day room day. Samantha sits, tapping her foot nervously, wrestles in her chair. Helena walks up. Getting ready to go? Yeah, my group home supervisor is coming to pick me up. Samantha is still very restless, trying to keep it together. You know we're here for you. I'm not leaving. Just going somewhere else for a few days. <laughs> what do you mean? My parents' probation hearing is coming up, and that always messes me up. They're not going to get out. Not after what they did to me. Samantha is now rocking back and forth in her chair with her hands clenched together. You don't know that for sure. Helena leaning towards Samantha. Look, the simple fact that you can talk about it, talk about your parents, that takes courage. You will be absolutely safe out there. And if you need to come back here, I know you will always be safe here. Because you'll be here, I'm not going anywhere. The side door to the day room opens, and a male staff person enters. Time to go. Take it... Well, I was going to say, take it one day at a time. But, to start, take it one step at a time. Samantha smiles and turns and walks slowly toward the door. The male staff person escorts Samantha out toward the, into the lobby, where her group home supervisor, a woman in her 50s, greets her. Samantha turns and gives a faint little wave. Helena smiles sincerely. Samantha turns back and walks out. Helena watches her leave. Colette steps next to her. It's good to care, but just don't lose yourself in the process. I just hope she's okay. She is never going to be okay. She's going to get by, and we're going to be here when she needs us. And that, my friend, is as good as it gets. Yeah, as good as it gets. As good as anything gets. Colette and Helena start to walk out the back door. It's the end of the day. You know, I saw that homeless lady yesterday with a small fortune in her shopping cart. Where? Under the overpass, right where she said she lived. She was sleeping in an old sleeping bag, her head sticking out of her small tent tucked back in a corner. With many years worth of rent money wrapped in newspapers next door. Incredible. Nope. Crazy. Colette smiles. Crazy like a fox. This makes Helena smile. They both laugh. Cut to exterior Helena's apartment, sunset. The sun sets behind Helena's apartment. Cut to interior Helena's apartment, living room, night. Helena lays on the bed, phone to her ear, looking at the empty space beside her. Jake is on the other line, sounding more upbeat than usual. Kevin and Millie say hi. They got a dog. His name's Mitch, I think. Oh, nice. You all ready for work? Totally. Looking forward to getting back in the swing of things. Helena doesn't like that comment. I didn't realize you had been out of the swing of things. Don't be like that. You know what I mean. It's okay. I gotta go. I gotta make some dinner. I can't eat any more takeout. Oh, call the VA. I saw Murphy at the grocery store and he said they were trying to contact you. Why? And why didn't he just call me? I don't know. He said he'd been trying. I told him I'd let you know. I'm just passing on the message. What does he want? Didn't say. And you didn't ask? No, I didn't ask. Well, thanks. No problem. Sweet dreams. She hangs up the phone and lays there for a moment, lost. Eventually, Helena gets up and exits the room. Cut to interior Helena's apartment, living room, night. SFX. The sounds of a nearby late-night traffic, arguing couples, loud music, sirens, and airplanes fill the apartment. Helena sits down on her grandmother's rocking chair, calmly rocking forwards and backwards, a notebook and pencil on her lap. SFX sounds end. She begins to write in the notebook. So here I am again, alone, thinking about how messed up my life is. Why can't I just get it right? But there are so many people that have nothing. I feel overwhelmed, lost. 
There are murderers running around free, corporations stealing their employees' retirement, druggies looking for their next fix. Samantha is out there, all alone. Jean is out there, all alone. And I'm in here, all alone. She laughs to herself. People do things to children, and we have to pick up the pieces. She feels the unconscionableness of those people. Yes, everyone's crazy. Some just deal with it better than others. One step to the left or right too far, and you just fall off. Oh, he's laughing. Not to judge a shopping cart by the person and the stuff that is in it. Not to judge parents by the car they drive. Not to judge a man by what he says. Helena smiles, puts down the pencil, and turns her head toward the window and continues to rock. Cut to interior Helena's apartment night kitchen. Helena is cutting vegetables on a cutting board. The knife is sharp as it slices through carrots and celery. Muzak is playing from her Amazon dot wireless speaker on the counter. Eventually the Muzak stops and we hear a man's voice. Helena. Hey, Murph. Finally, I have no idea what was up with the phones. Not sure, but you've got me now. So what's up? Listen, I'll get right to it. Your replacement didn't work out. She was a total flake. HR was going back to the drawing board and the hiring process, and I told them I'd reach out to you and see if we could get you back. Did Jake put you up to this? You know I live in California. They all know that. Jake doesn't know anything. He didn't ask why I wanted to talk to you. So, anyway, they understand your value and they're willing to pay for it. They have grant money to spend on personnel and they basically said you can name your price and it's yours. And, well, obviously Jake is now back here as well. You interested? Helena stops cutting, thinks deeply, looking at the still red fading finger marks on her wrist. To be quite honest, we'd love to have you back. The VA gang misses you. Is this a real offer? Real as steel. Come back to Michigan, surrounded by friends and family, only this time making a lot more money. What do you say? Helena is still in deep thought, dead air as she doesn't respond. Eventually. Don't tell me you need more time to think about it. Helena seems to come to a decision. No, I don't need more time. Great. What day do you want to start? I'm not coming back. Helena, this isn't something to turn down on impulse. Mom, when have I ever done anything on impulse? You know me. Helena walks over to the window and looks out over San Francisco. Night lights. That job, that place, UBS has a hold on you. I can tell by your voice. I think I can make a real difference here, Murph. The city is amazing, and I'm getting used to good Chinese food. At least talk numbers with HR first. They're desperate, and who knows how high they're willing to go. Helena takes a deep breath, looks at the knife in her hand. I really appreciate it, Murph. But I have a plan, and I'm going to stick to it. I remember you telling me that your mom always said, it's Helena's way or the highway. I hear you, kid. You know me too well. Well, call me if things change, okay? Murph, you're on my speed dial. But don't wait by the phone. Take care of yourself, kid. I will. Big hug to you and the gang. She hangs up. Takes a deep breath, goes back to cutting her vegetables. SFX, quiet, eerie music. She finishes cutting the celery, grabs the last carrot and begins cutting it. The blade slices through the carrot. She finishes and scoops all of the cut vegetables into a bowl. She rinses the knife, then shuts the faucet and looks at the knife's blade for a minute. Her eyes follow the steel all the way up to the blade's tip. She tightens her grip on the handle, squeezes it. SFX, eerie music ends. She pauses as she holds it for a moment. Then she opens the dishwasher and sticks the knife blade down into the dishwasher's utensil blast basket. She closes the dishwasher, clicking it closed tightly. Elena walks off, leaving us alone in the kitchen. 
we see something sticking out of the garbage can. It is the framed photo of Elena and Jake that we saw her unpacking earlier. SFX. We can hear sirens in the distance outside. Cut to full screen darkness. No more sirens in the distance. No more noise of any kind. And then... I guess she didn't need to be normal. Because no one else is normal. End of episode.